Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to do part two of my Princeton Reverb build video series. Uh, in part one, we built the chassis, including mounting all the hardware, drilling all the holes, putting everything on that needs to go on. Uh, that's a pretty big step. So now we're going to move on to the component board. I'm using a fiber board. Uh, you can buy this kind of as a wholesale rectangular deal. You cut it out, drill it out the holes according to your uh, mounting template, and then I'm going to be using eyelets that I'm going to mount myself. Uh, so we're going to walk through that process. I hope you are going to enjoy this. Let me know your co thoughts and comments down below. Uh, have you ever made your own eyelet board or, or turret board of any kind? And what's your preferred method of, of mounting your components to your boards? Uh, I'd really be curious to know. I've used quite a variety from PCB to eyelets to turrets to even uh, more of a point-to-point -point wiring setup. And I really find that they all are very capable of producing successful results. So um, we're going to make some alterations in this one, but I'd love to hear from you guys your thoughts. Uh, so please check out the links in the description below if you want to uh, support my channel and encourage more videos like this. And uh, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Well guys, I made a bit of a goof. This is my component board. I know it looks kind of insane with all the wires going around everywhere, but actually that was fine and nice and easy. The problem is that this is the orientation of my chassis. The front panel is here, the tubes are back here. This row of connections needs to go to the tubes. But I put my power resistor over here, which needs to be over here. So my component board is actually backwards. So I should have mirrored it 90 degrees, which is a bit of a whoopsie. All right, here's my updated component board. This has been a little bit of an adventure. I basically had to take all the components out of the board and rewire it. But now everything should be good to go. I want to take a look at the power supply of the Princeton Reaver build. This is an IEC power cord and I drilled a hole and installed a rubber grommet, th threaded the cord through the hole, tied it into a knot for some strain relief, and then I've got a terminal strip down there. The middle is the green lug that is bolted to the power transformer. The, come on focus. The bottom lug is black and the top lug is white. So the black goes here to the switch, goes from the switch over here to the fuse. The fuse goes into this black wire right here into the power transformer. Then the white wire just direct connects directly from white to power transformer. So that's how I'm wiring up the primary side of my power of this amp. Next, we're starting on the secondary side. This is my tube rectifier 8-pin uh, slot. We've got these two yellow wires that are going into pins 2 and 8. Then this guy is going to go out. This is actually carrying my rectified B plus voltage to the circuit board. Then pins 4 and 6 have these two red wires. That's where the high voltage is going to come in. And then we've got this red wire here, which can help uh, go feed the 
the bias. Now this power transformer also comes with a blue wire here, which I believe is like a 50 volt tab, so I could really use either of these. I need to change my bias circuit a little bit, but I do have some options there. But any which way, my tube rectifier is now wired. All right, we're doing filaments now. I used a little bit of the green wire coming out of the power transformer. It's going directly to pins two and seven. And then I want to keep it in phase. So the same wire that's on two here goes to two here. The same wire that's on seven here goes to seven here. Now I am going to sw sw switch it up from here because I got to do a little bit of a run over and I want to run it kind of along the bottom of the chassis to try to keep it out of the way, kind of tuck it in the corners and come up because this, this room in here is going to get used by my circuit board. So I'm switching to this red and blue wire. That's going to help me keep track of the phase. <clears throat> and what I've done is I've cut it and I've stuck two ends in the chuck of this drill. And then I'm just going to simply hold this other end and then you press the trigger on the drill and that will wrap it into a nice cord. And that leaves you with this. Looks beautiful. I think wiring the filaments is one of the more challenging things to do in an amplifier. Um, you want to tightly twist the wires because that will reduce a hum because it's an AC signal. And you've got a lot of sensitive leads. Like right here, you've got plate, grid, cathode. And this plate and grid resist components right here, these terminals, are really sensitive. And so you want to tightly twist the pair. But the truth of the matter is that it being tightly twisted down here probably doesn't really matter a whole lot. Where you want it tightly twisted is right by these two pins. And that's the hardest part to keep it tightly twisted. So the method I'm employing is to use the hope the opening, which is down there on the far side. This is pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got pins four and five bridged together, and then pins nine. And I'm using that opening to kind of come in and go back out. So that's going to be the goal and the intention. But you can see I'm trying to keep it tightly twisted. And you can see right here, I'm trying to keep the tight twist all the way up into the socket as close as I possibly can. And I'm giving myself some space between these sensitive grid and plate terminals and tube socket terminals and the ace noisy AC. Another little tip, I'm using solid core wire. I think the solid core wire it holds the strand a little bit nicer. And it's also, you know, once you kind of make these, like right here I made it a little bit of a right angle, turn, right angle. It just kind of holds those angles a little bit better. Uh, and, and yeah, I also recommend doing it early on. You can see I don't have the component board in here and I don't have all this wired up. I think it's a lot harder to do this filament stuff with everything else wired in place. Next tip. Because of the route I'm going, the blue wire is going here to pin 9, and the red wire is going here to pin 4. So I'm actually trimming the blue wire slightly shorter than the red wire, because the red wire has got to go up all the way. That'll help it from bunching. Next tip has to deal with how much of the heat or the tubing you remove. On the blue wire, I'm removing a fair bit less on the red wire, I'm moving a fair bit more because the red wire is going to run into pin four, like you can see here, into pin four, and it's going to loop and bridge into pin five. So because it needs to make a double run, I'm trimming off more of the red. One last comment, my power transformer We've got the white and black are the primary, green are the 6.3 filament, yellow is the five volt uh, AC for the heaters, for the power, for the rectifier tube. Red is the high voltage B plus. This is a center tap that's gonna be grounded. This is a bias tap for 50 volts. So I do not have a center tap so what I'm going to do is get two 100 ohm resistors. I'm going to run them off of this spot here and probably do a ground node here. So it should help me to keep the heater hum to a minimum. Given some of my space requirements, I mean, a 5 a 3 chassis is really pretty tight for a Princeton reverb. So we're going to need to make some uh, movements here to get this thing to work. First thing I've done is I've 
rather than using a cap can, I'm basically using the single terminal strip here. And I loaded my entire B plus circuit onto this guy. So if you follow with me, this is where the rectified voltage will come out into here. This is B plus node number one. So I've got a couple of this, this wire goes out to the output transformer. We've got this wire here that goes to the board to supply the B plus one voltage. And I've got this filter cap here with the green wire or the green tubing covering its leg. Then B plus node number two is right here. I've got like, let's see here. These two red nodes, the wires going off. Um, I think one is going to the reverb driver and one is going to the component board. Then we've got B plus node three right here. Let's see. That filter cap is down here. Filter cap number two is here. Number three is down here. This red wire is sending out to the component board as well. Then we go here to B plus node number four. Right there, you can see we've just got this dropping resistor right there on the board. And then we got this final red wire which supplies the B plus to all the preamp tubes. Past that, I've also ran off of B plus node number two, this yellow wire here to pin four, and then a jumper here, pin four over here. So that's giving me uh, grid, uh, power, plate voltage. Actually, I think it's screen, I'm sorry, it's screen grid voltage to pins four on the six V6s. So basically my power supply and V plus step down circuit is wired. many updates first of all I got my reverb driver uh, I was waiting for that to come in the mail so I've mounted that that has now also allowed me to mount the board I've got one um, basically I've got a bow a screw some spacers and then a nut and a washer here I've got another one here that's also holding on one leg of that transformer this guy right here so this guy is pretty firmly in place, and once I actually start soldering all these components, all these guys are going down to those tube sockets, all these guys here are going up to these potentiometers, it's going to be really quite secure. I got my leads here for my reverb transformer. That's all looking really good. I have started wiring in some of these initial components here from the power supply side into the component board. I also got my pilot light here. Uh, so I ran just a parallel path off of the 2 and 7 right there as red and blue to the 6.3 volt tap there for the pilot light. Now uh, where I had to get a little creative was actually the bias circuit. So if you follow this little blue wire here, this is my 50 volt tap. That's going to right there, which you can see there's a diode use this guy instead right here right there there's a 1N4007 diode rectifying 50 volts AC to DC then we got a 15k resistor right there and right up here hidden way underneath we've got a 100 volt 47 microfarad filter capacitor. So again, the 58 volts AC goes in here. It gets rectified to DC here. It gets smoothed by this filter cap here. It gets dropped a little from that resistor right there. Then it runs on this blue wire here. And this is my adjustable fixed bias potentiometer. 40, uh, 50, K, then we got a 50K resistor here to ground. So that's gonna be my adjustable fixed bias circuit. 
and then that's going to run off of this blue wire here to feed to the tremolo pot. So that was quite a bit of surgery. Basically my bias pot is right here on that terminal strip. I also have these two black wires here which are the cathodes of the 6v6s that are running to this position here and this position here and I've got one ohm resistors and then this is kind of my ground plane. So kind of a lot of different things going on in that area. This area of the amp did get a little bit busy. Um, I could have potentially elected to take these filter caps and put them in a dog house on top of the amp but I decided to do this. So it's going to be a little bit cramped but the amp is going to work just fine. It'll be a lot better once a lot of this fickle mess of wire goes away and a lot of that is going to get trimmed off. I have way too much wire. But we are moving right along and everything is just looking beautiful. Away we go.